Let's add and subtract decimals. When you're adding decimals, you're going to write the problem vertically, lining up the decimals. Then you're going to add zeros to fill in any empty place values after the decimal. Then you're going to add and then bring down the decimal into your answer. So let's follow these steps and do a few guided practice problems. So first we're going to write this problem vertically. So we will have 77 and 843 thousandths plus, again we line up the decimals, 9 and 45 hundredths. We have one place value here that does not have a digit, so we were, are going to go ahead and add a zero here. Now we'll just add straight down, just as you would whole numbers, not forgetting to carry. And then your decimal should just drop straight down. So once you get an answer, you should be able to draw a straight line and connect all three decimals, both the two that you're adding and the one that's in your answer. So let's do that again over here. 146 and 9 tenths plus 32 and 87 hundredths. Once again, we are missing a digit here, so we will go ahead and add a zero. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight right now, straight down my decimals, and drop this one down. And now we'll add straight down again. And we get 179 and 77 hundredths. Subtracting decimals is the exact same as adding decimals. You will write the problem vertically, lining up the decimals, you will add zeros to fill in the empty place values, and when you're subtracting, it's even more important that you add in the zeros than with addition. You're going to subtract and then bring down the decimal. So let's look here. We have 75 minus 19 and 25 hundredths. A lot of times it's very easy to forget that 75 actually is a decimal. It has a decimal. Any whole number has a decimal at the back, followed by an infinite number of zeros. So we can set this up as 75 minus 19 and 25 hundredths. This is where it becomes very important to add in your zeros. If the zeros are not added in right here, it's very easy um, for you to think, and a lot of students do this, that you can just drop down the 25 and then subtract 75 and 19, and that is not the case. So we're going to add a decimal and some zeros here. Now we're going to subtract the correct way. We're going to have to borrow all the way across, and now we'll subtract. So you get 55 and 75 hundredths. Let's look at one more over here. We have 103 and 6 hundredths minus 42 and 765 thousandths. Once again, we are missing a digit, so we will add a zero. And then we will start our subtraction. And I want to little, um, give you a little reminder here with um, subtraction and borrowing. Right here, 2 minus 2 works, so I would stop borrowing, right? But if I look next door, and this is a, ten, this is a 0, I can't take 4 from 0. So what I'll have to do is start over. Oops. So this becomes a 10, and this would become a 0. In this case, you end up with the same problem. You had 10 minus 4 right here, and all we did was say 10 minus 4 down here, but that just worked because it was a 10 and a 4, or the 10. It's not always going to be the case, so you need to make sure you still show that borrowing. Okay, now let's go back and subtract 10 minus 5, 15 minus 6, 9 minus 7. I'm going to bring down my decimal, 2 minus 2, and then 10 minus 4. So my answer is 60 and 295 
thousandths. So quick little review, you write it vertically, add zeros, add or subtract, and then just drop down that decimal right into your answer.